Yellowstone National Park is famous for its geysers, hot springs, and most importantly for housing the world's largest active supervolcano. There have been three known super eruptions in Yellowstone's past, creating massive calderas that are still present today. But while we know the basics of what happened in those ancient blasts, new research is revealing just how much more there is to know. Let's dig into the latest findings about Yellowstone's history and find out why scientists are saying that its past eruptions may not be so ancient after all. To understand what new discoveries are telling us about Yellowstone, we need to start with a brief history lesson. The park is home to a magma chamber that fuels an area of intense geothermal activity. This chamber is divided into three segments by the faults that run through the park, the eastern, central and western Yellowstone caldera. The areas where these faults intersect are also where most of the earthquakes happen. And it's the eastern and western calderas that have produced the three largest eruptions in recorded history. But before we get into the big ones, we should talk about the smaller eruptions that happen pretty frequently. Like in 2022, when a series of earthquakes struck the park, they revealed a new magma intrusion in the eastern caldera. Now this isn't anything to worry about. Magma intrusions are pretty common in Yellowstone and often end up becoming new geysers or hot springs. So, if you do plan to visit Yellowstone, just watch your step because you might just find yourself walking away with some brand new thermal features to explore. But now let's get back to those bigger explosions. In the late Pleistocene epoch, which ended about 11,700 years ago, there was a massive eruption from the Yellowstone supervolcano. It sent over 2,400 cubic kilometers of ash, pumice and other debris raining down across the western United States. Today, the remnants of this eruption form the Huckleberry Ridge, tough, a layer of solidified lava and ash that extends as far away as Idaho and western Wyoming. And as far as we knew until recently, this was the first major blast to come from the Yellowstone supervolcano. Then in the Holocene epoch, which began about 11,700 years ago, there were two major eruptions, one in the year 128,000 and another in 640,000. Both of these eruptions formed enormous calderas. The older of the two is now called the Mesa Falls Caldera, and it stretches for about 45 kilometers from north to south and 32 kilometers from east to west. Meanwhile, the younger one is named the Lava Creek Caldera, and it measures roughly 43 kilometers from north to south and 25 kilometers from east to west. Each of these eruptions ejected tens of thousands of cubic kilometers of material and left behind layers of ash, more than one meter thick, that have been found as far away as Utah, Nevada, and New Mexico. It's important to note that we're talking about volumes here that dwarf the approximately 30 cubic kilometers of material ejected during the 1980 Mount Esty Helens eruption, which at the time was the most violent eruption in recorded human history. Those earlier Holocene eruptions basically wiped the slate clean, leaving behind vast barren wastelands where once lush forests had grown. And as far as we knew until recently, it would be another 500,000 years before anything close to another eruption happened. But thanks to recent research, we're learning that the story of the supervolcano is a lot more complicated than we thought. First, we now know that there was actually an eruption shortly before the Mesa Falls event, which may have set the stage for what happened next. Between 130,000 and 140,000 years ago, a series of small explosions happened in Yellowstone's eastern caldera. They created small summit craters and sent ash 160 kilometers into the air. But it wasn't long before the magma chamber started to quiet down again. And then around 128,000 years ago, seismic activity shifted to the western caldera. The magma chamber here produced lava lakes and built up the region's highest peaks, Mount Holmes and Mount Black Twin. But then it too fell silent. That is until about 640,000 years ago when magma once again began to stir in the western caldera. It produced a series of small explosions before erupting violently and emptying the magma chamber in just a few days. And it was this blast, not the one that happened 128,000 years before, that created the vast caldera we now call 
the Yellowstone caldera. So what does this mean? Why is this new information important? Well, for starters, it means that the timeline of events at Yellowstone has been a lot more dynamic than we originally thought. Up until now, researchers believe that the Mesa Falls eruption was the first major event in the Holocene, but it turns out that there was an even larger eruption that happened 640,000 years ago. It also means that the time between major eruptions has been variable. Sometimes there were hundreds of thousands of years between eruptions, while other times they happened within a few hundred years of each other. And finally, it suggests that each of the major calderas may have their own unique eruption style. The older one to the east seems to produce lots of small explosions followed by a few larger ones. Meanwhile, the one to the west has only ever produced one major eruption. Now before we go, we have to address the elephant in the room, a supervolcano in Yellowstone erupting any time soon. While we now know that there have been more eruptions in Yellowstone's past than we previously thought, it doesn't necessarily mean that there's any increased likelihood of a future explosion. Scientists carefully monitor the park for signs of unrest, such as increases in earthquake activity, ground deformation and gas emissions, and so far there's no indication that any eruption is imminent. In fact, based on all of the evidence we currently have, the chance of an eruption in the next 10 million years is about 1%. If it helps, you can think of Yellowstone's eruptions as a bit like childbirth. Just as it's impossible to predict exactly when any one person will give birth, it's also difficult to predict exactly when a volcano will erupt. But just like with people, if you look at a large enough sample size, you can start to see some patterns emerge. And while any one individual birth is a low probability event, the chances of at least one happening in any given year are pretty high. Likewise, while any one eruption may be a low probability event, the likelihood of one happening sometime in the next million or so years is quite high. Knowing all of this, it's clear that Yellowstone's history is a lot more complicated than we thought. Thanks to recent research, we're learning that there have been more eruptions in Yellowstone's past than we previously thought. And while this doesn't necessarily mean that there's any increased likelihood of a future explosion, it does suggest that each of the major calderas may have their own unique eruption style. Going forward, researchers hope to learn even more about Yellowstone's history, which will help them better understand the likelihood of future eruptions and what those eruptions might look like. So the next time you're planning a trip to Yellowstone, make sure to keep an eye out for any new features that may have formed since your last visit. You never know what you might find. Speaking of new features, this channel has a new feature, a community tab. It's a place where you can find all sorts of cool stuff, including our community posts and videos. Our team uses it to share updates about what's going on behind the scenes. It's also a great way for us to get feedback from all of you, so please stop by and check it out. We would love to have you, and thank you for watching.